So what we're going to do now is we're going to discuss two different ways to take an array full of, I'll call them random data, and turn it into a heap. So let's look at an array. Okay? And I think I mentioned to you that often is the case we're not going to use the, the first element in the array just to make the relationships of parents and children a little bit easier. So I'm going to block this one out right here and say that's index 0 is just not going to be used for the array. I'll put the other indexes up here. And I'm going to fill the array with some data initially. And so the first thing I'm going to show you here is going to be the Williams method is a simple method, and it takes O of n log n time to convert the array into a heap. So it's a little bit slower than the other technique I'm going to show you, but it's a little bit easier. The Williams method can best be described as a sequence of successive insertions. In other words, we just insert the first number, then we insert the next number, and the next number. How do we insert? Using the insertion technique that I reviewed at the beginning of class today. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the 4, and we're going to just insert that into our heap, and that's going to become our initial root of the heap. So we're going to start with the 4, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the 2. We're going to insert the 2. Now, we're going to build a max heap. And so when we insert the 2, we're going to just insert it right here, like that. And what I need to know is, do I need to make any adjustments on this heap to restore the heap properties? We're good there. So now we're going to insert the 7. When we insert into a heap, we always insert at the next available slot on the lowest level. So here, we're going to insert the 7 right here. And now what I want to know is, do I still have a heap? I do not. So now I need to bubble up like we showed before on the insertion process. So what do I need to swap here? Mr. Nikita? Seven and four. So I'm going to swap the 7 and the 4. And so far we're good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the 6. So I'm going to insert the 6 here. And what I want to know is do I need to make any swaps at this point? I think I do. So here, I'm going to swap the 6 and the 2. Do I need to swap the 6 and the 7? No, because it's a max heap. The seven's bigger. And so now, I'm going to insert the 3. Here, I don't need to swap anything. And then the last thing I need to do is insert the 5. And here, I need to swap the 5 and the 4. Now, here, I've finished building my heap. And the array, which originally looked like this, I would like you to take out a piece of paper. We're going to do a bunch of exercises now. I would like you to draw what the finished array will look like here. Uh, we, we don't have anything in the array there, and we're never going to access it. So it's, you can put any number you want in there. It's just not going to get used. And the reason we're not using it is that we want to have the parent-child relationships be 2i and 2i plus 1. And if we were to use this, it would just make the relationships just slightly more complicated. You could do it with that. But historically, most of the authors don't use that slot and then just use the rest. So that's what I'm doing as well. OK, so how are we going to fill these, this array to, to represent this heap here? OK, level order traversal. So what do I put in here, Mila? Seven, Seven six, six five, five, two, three, four. OK, like that. Now, I'm showing you the original array, and I'm showing you the finished array. It's important that you understand is that as I added each element and I swapped, I, would have made, I should have made changes to the array as I go. I didn't do that just for the sake of time. But as I'm swapping here, I would actually be swapping here. So the array would just slowly build towards a heap and would finish with this with set of values. Is that clear? Now we're going to look at, so this was the Williams method. And the reason why it's n log n is we have to process every node. See, we have to process every number. And the number of flips that we have to do is basically dependent on the height of the tree. So any number that I insert, the, the maximum number of times it has to travel to the top, how many uh, comparisons and, and swaps I have to do is based on the height of the tree. And that's basically log n. So that's where the n log n comes from for the Williams method. 
I'm going to show you another method now which runs in linear time, so it's faster, but it's just slightly more complicated. This, uh, I have seen it referred to as build max heap, and also called build min heap, obviously, if you're building uh, with the smaller numbers, higher priority. But those are the two names that I've seen given to it. So let's look at a, a scenario like that. So once again, I have an array here. Okay. And I want you to write these numbers in for me. So we're going to start with... Uh, and the first thing I want you to do is I want you to pretend that this is a heap uh, and just draw the resulting uh, structure that would show up. Obviously, the numbers are not in the right place, but draw the binary tree that results from this structure here. So I'll get you started. So 12 will be the root, and then what would be the two children here, et cetera, et cetera. Just fill that in for me. So to see if the idea of the heap is sort of seeping into your brain slowly, where are the leaves of the heap on, in this array? If this was a heap, where would the leaves be stored? Okay, Ben, where would they be stored? At the end of the array. At the end of the array. Not, we don't add a heap yet, but if this was a heap, all the leaves would be at the end of the array. All right, so uh, let's see, who has not helped me? Mr. Uh, Mr. Amrani, sir, uh, help me fill this uh, binary tree out. Okay. And this method, which is called the build max heap method, we're going to again build a max heap here. What we're going to do is we're going to start at the end of the array and we're going to work to our left. And furthermore, at each stop, we're going to look to see if the number that we have that we're examining has a subheap below it. And if not, we're going to make adjustments. Now, I want you to notice something. Here, when we start looking at 91, is 91 by itself, forget about everything that's above it, but is 91 and everything below it, is it a subheap right now? It is a subheap by definition. How about the 18? Subheap? Yes. 21? Subheap? How about this part? Here and here. You can see. So the leaves are already where, they're, they're already okay. They don't need to be processed like we're going to process them. So therefore, in this technique, the first node we really need to process is which node? This is the first node we need to process. Now, generally speaking, this, this last level is not filled out, but in a typical heap, the nodes, the leaves, represent what percent of the total nodes if the heap's all filled out? Yes, sir? About half. About half. So you can see that al already it's a little bit faster than the Williams method because half the nodes don't need processing. Before, every node needed processing in the Williams method. Here, I can at least initially ignore the leaves. So I'm going to start by processing the 32. And my question is, the 32 right here and everything below it is in this, shown in this green shape here. Is that a proper subheap right now? It is not. So how are we going to fix it here? Mr. Nikita, how are we going to fix the green part? We, we want this green part in here, sir, to be a, a, a max heap on its own. We have, to, we have to bubble it, sir. So what, what two should we swap? OK, we have to swap 91 and 32. So we're going to, is that green part now a subheap? It is. So we're done processing the 91. Now, I've swapped them here. I should also swap them here. So uh, we'll just put the 91 in here. And we'll put the 32 in here. Now we're going to process the next one which is the 13. And what I want to know is, is this a subheap here? Is it a proper subheap? It is not. Mr. Mulcahy, what should I do, sir? Sir, would it be OK if I had swapped the 18 instead? No. So I have to look to see which is bigger. Here, there was no issue because there was only one child here. But here, you can see I have to take the bigger one. And so now. And now this part has been finished, so now I have to change it over here, 21 and 13, like that. And now we have to process the 2 next. And I want to see if this is a subheap now. And it is not, so we're going to swap the 88 and the 2. 
And now we're going to process the 20, and we want to make sure this whole thing is a subheap. Is it a subheap right now? It is not. So we need to swap it. Can I arbitrarily swap it with either of these? No. Which one should I swap it with? With the 91. And now I'm not done still. I need to do another bubble here and swap the 32 and the 20. And now I'm done processing. So now I need to see if the whole thing is a heap. And so now I need to bubble it all the way down. So I'm going to swap the 91 with the 12. And then I'm going to swap the 32 with the 12. And then I'm going to swap the 20 with the 12. And I need to make the corresponding changes up here so that my final array looks like this. The first item is still not used. Then I have the 91 and 12. Let me just check to see if I did that all right. So that is the process. So you can see this one's a little bit faster. Now, if you want proof that this is log, log n, uh, sorry, if, if you want proof this is linear time, O of n, and is faster than Williams, there's a video that I will point you to later. That it, the, the proof is surprisingly complicated, so I'm just not going to go into it. But this is faster than the Williams method. It's just a little bit more complicated. Now, what we're going to do in the remaining 45 minutes is we're going to code the Williams method. We're not going to code this one because it's too hard, but the Williams method is really easy to code.